Um, welcome to our next segment related to Southeast Asian art. Um, we've been looking at um, representations of art and Buddhism, and we've been looking at different um, geographic locations, um, and we've been looking at different architecture as well as different images of Buddha. We're going to be looking at one now. Um, there are hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of images of the Buddha Shakyamuni that exists in the world today. Remember the Buddha, um, I think it's Shakyamuni or Shak Shazamuni. Um, he's the historical Buddha. Um, some are big, some are small, some are made of precious metals like gold, while others are carved of stone, cast from bronze, modeled from plastic, painted on silk or printed on paper. What makes one image of the Buddha Shakyamuni more sacred than the other? It is is it its material composition, its age, its owner? It is all of the above. Is it all of the above or is it something else? Who was the Buddha Shaka, Shaka, Shakyamuni? Buddhism was founded by one individual, Satahartha um, Gautama, sometime, sometime in the 6th and 5th century BCE. And again, this man is the historical Buddha, Siddhartha Gautama, who was also known as Shak, Shak, Shakyamuni. During the time of the Buddha, there was only one school of Buddhism, um, which is the one that um, Buddha taught. However, over time, there came to be different sects of Buddhism. The Yowo um, Shakyamuni, um, um, or the Yowo Rinpoche, and again, I'm, I'm horrible, R-I-N-P-O-C-H-E, which means precious one, in the Tibetan language is a larger than life size image of the historical Buddha Shaka Muni housed in the um, Yohang Temple in Lhasa, Tibet. Today, the um, Zhoa um, Shaka Muni can be seen seated against a replendent gold and bejeweled throne. The image itself is made of gilt metal. Um, the effect is an image of gold hue with shocking blue hair. Yowo Jakamuni is seated with his legs in the lotus po position or um, Padmasana. His um, left hand is in a mudra or hand gesture of meditation, um, the Dhyana mudra. And his right hand is in the gesture of calling the earth to witness. Um, and that is known as Blumus Parshara. Oh, God. Blumus Parsha Mudra. And again, these spellings are all in your lecture notes. And, you know, again, don't worry so much about spellings. Um, together, these postures signify the moment of the Buddha's enlightenment. He is shown wearing a thin monk's robe, which drapes over his body and covers his left shoulder. When just, um, Yoa Shakamuni is presented with a magnificent jewel crowned and robes. So you can see this is a very decorative and very ornamental um, depiction of Buddha. The sculpture has undergone restoration and reconstruction over its history, the most recent of which took place at the cultural, after the Cultural Revolution. It is not known what the image may have an, originally looked like in the 7th century when it was made. However, early texts describe the sculpture as being depicted in a similar, similarly enlightened state, seated in Padmasana with hands in the Buhim Isparsha Mudra. One of the main variations is described in 11th century text, um, which is one of the, and, it, and, and the name of the text is in your notes. Um, it's it, it translate, translates to vase-shaped um, pillar testament. Um, the earliest written description of the image, which states that a wrathful deity is seen protruding from the Buddha's neck. No such wrathful deity can be seen today on the sculpture. Similarly, the um, resplendent crowns and robes that the sculpture is seen wearing today are much later additions. Nonetheless, the continued restoration and veneration of the Yoa um, Shasamuni over the course of its 13-year history is a testament to its religious and cultural importance in Tibet. 
the Yoa Shakyamuni is considered the most sacred and important Buddha image in Tibet because it is believed to have been carved by the celestial architect Vishnu Karma in India during the lifetime of the Buddha Shak Shak Shakyamuni, 6th and 5th century BCE. Texts such as the 11th century vase shaped pillar testament suggest that the Yoa Shakyamuni was sculpted from a life portrait of the Buddha. Um, the purpose of um, the statue's carving was to act as Buddha's proxy after his um, para um, nirvana or departure from the world or his, you know, his final extinction. The religious significance and sacred power of the Yoa Shakyamuni therefore comes from its actual likeness of the Buddha as well as it as it having been carved by Vishnu Karma. Such claims of likeness and celestial origins are not unique to the Yoa Shakyamuni. Um, the Emerald Buddha in Thailand and the Saryo Buddha in Japan have almost identical origin stories. Um, while texts regarding the sculpture's origin and history would like us to believe that the Yoa Shakyamuni is the most accurate and thereby the earliest portrait of the Buddha, this sculpture in its original form was likely made sometime during the early to middle 7th century CE. The invention of the Buddha image is an anthropomorphic human, and its anthropomorphic human form dates to after the turn of the 1st century CE, circa early 2nd century. Um, with the advent of Mahayana, um, Mahayana Buddhism during the Kushan dynasty. The purported date of the Yoa Shakyamun Ito, the time of the Buddha from um, the 6th and 5th century BC, is not considered with the development of Buddha Im imagery in the history of Buddhist art nor does the actual sculpture conform to stylistic conventions of early Buddha images. Um, more convincing is an early to middle 7th century date of production um, for the Yoa Shakyamuni. The earliest evidence for the sculpture dates to the 7th century when the Chinese princess um, Wei Qing um, Gong, Gongzu is said to have brought it to Tibet as part of her marriage dowry to the Emperor um, Shak um, Songsten um, Gambo in 641. This dates, the dates also coincide with the foundation of Buddhism in Tibet. Um, what this suggests is that while the Zhoa Jakamuni is not among the first images of the Buddha, it is, it is important if not diminished as its appearance in Tibet coincides with the foundation of Buddhism in the country. Um, while two um, Yoa Jakamuni, while the Yoa Jakamuni, <laughs> Yoa Jakamuni is not sculpted from life, from life, sculpted from life portrait of the Buddha, nor is it the earliest image of the Buddha, it nonetheless holds cultural and religious importance to those who worship the image as such. This is evidenced by its continued veneration, the dressing of the sculpture for special occasions, and feeding of it, if it were um, the Buddha on earth. So what makes one image of the Buddha Shakyamuni more sacred than the other? In examining the Yoa Shakyamuni, it is the sculpture's um, purported direct lineage to the Buddha, as well as, as the belief that it is the most accurate portrait of the Buddha Shakyamuni. Right, in our next work, we're going to be looking at um, some some more Buddhist architecture. Um, Borobudur um, um, Temple in Indonesia. So paths have been um, per pervasive in human civilization. We are all familiar with the streets, trails, and lanes lanes along which we routinely travel. Ancient roads are utilized in some places even today, um, in contemporary computer culture, we follow paths on web pages as we find our way to the information of experience we are searching for or find unexpectedly. There are simulated paths and complex first-person virtual reality video environments where role-playing games formulate their content around the path to be
conquered. The idea of path is an important concept in Buddhism, and it is essential in understanding the meaning and purpose of one of the most remarkable and impressive, impressive monuments in the world, Borobudur. Located on the island of Java in Indonesia, the rulers of the Salindra dynasty built the temple of Borobudur around 800 CE as a monument to the Buddha. Um, exact dates vary among scholars. The temple, or Khandi in um, Yanvanese, pronounced um, Shandi, fell into disguise roughly 100 years after its completion when, for still unknown reasons, the rulers of Java relocated the governing center to another part of the island. The British Lieutenant Governor of um, Java, Sir Thomas um, Stamford Raffles, only rediscovered the site in 1814 upon hearing reports from islanders of an incredible sanctuary deep within the island's interior. Sorry, Borobudur's design was conceived by the poet, thinker, and architect um, Gandharma, considered by many today to be a man of great wisdom and devotion. The temple has been described in a number of ways. Its basic structure resembles that of a pyramid, yet it has been also referred to as um, a ketya, or a shrine, a stupa, reliquary, um, and a sacred mountain. In fact, the name Salindra means, literally, literally means Lord of the Mountain. While the temple exhibits characteristics of all these archaeological configurations and ar sorry architectural configurations, it is its overall um, plan is that of a three-dimensional mandala. A mandala is a diagram of the cosmos used for meditation, and it is in that sense where the richest understanding of this monument occurs. Um, set high upon a hill vertically enhanced by its builders to achieve a greater elevation, Borobudur consists of a series of open air passageways that radiate around a central axis mundi, or cosmic axis. Devotees circuambulate clockwise along the walkways that gradually ascend to its uppermost level. At Borobudur, geometry, Geomancy and theology all instruct adherents um, toward the ultimate goal of enlightenment. Meticulously carved relief sculptures mediate a physical and spiritual journey that guides pilgrims progressively toward the higher status, states of consciousness. The entire site contains 504 statues of Buddha, um, 1,460 stone reliefs on the walls and opposite the balustrades um, decorated in the first four galleries, with an additional 1,212 decorative reliefs augmenting the path. The relief sculptures narrate the Buddha's teachings. The Dharma depicts various events related to his past life, um, Jataka, or the Jataka tales, um, and as well as illustrates didactic stories um, taken from important Buddhist scriptures or sutras. Interestingly, uh, another 160 relief sculptures adorn the base of this monument, but are concealed behind stone buttresses that were added shortly after the building's construction in order to further support the structure's weight. The hidden narrative reliefs were photographed when they were discovered in the late 19th century before the stones were put back help ensure the temple's stability. The 160 hidden panels do not form a continuous story, but each panel provides one complete illustration of cause and effect. There are depictions of, um, of activities from, uh, or, you know, sort of negative activities from gossip to murder. Um, with their corresponding punishments. There are also praiseworthy activities that include charity and pilgrimages to sanctuaries and their subsequent rewards. Um, the pains of hell and the pleasures of heaven are also illustrated. There are scenes of daily life complete with the full um, panorama of samsara, the endless cycle of birth and, um, and death. 
Um, the story starts from the glorious descent of the Lord Buddha um, from the Tushita heaven and ends with his first sermon in the deer park near um, Benares. The relief shows the birth, this relief um, shows the birth of Buddha as Prince Siddhartha, son of King Sudahodana and Queen Maya. Um, and, uh, of um, Cap Pilavatsu, um, which would be present day Nepal. The story is preceded by 27 panels showing various preparations in heaven, on earth to in heaven and on earth to welcome the final incarnation of the Bodha Vista um, before descending from um, Tushita heaven. The Bodha Vista entrusted his crown to his successor, the future Buddha um, Maitra. Um, he descended on earth in the shape of a white elephant with six tusks, um, penetrated um, that penetrated to Queen Maya's right tomb. Queen Maya had a dream of this event, which was interpreted that um, um, his um, her son would be, become either a sovereign or a Buddha. Um, uh, Bada Histava, or Badavista, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right, B-O-D-H-I-S-A-T-T-V-A, -T -T and I'm not sure if I mentioned this earlier, is, is um, a person who can achieve nirvana, um, but postpones doing so in order to help others achieve um, nirvana. Um, So when we're looking at this um, depiction of Queen Maya and her retreat to Lumbini to give birth to the Prince Siddhartha Gautama. Um, so while Queen Mary felt that it was time to give birth, she went to Lumb Lumbuni um, Park outside um, what is present day Nepal. Um, she stood under a, a plaksa tree holding one branch with her right hand and she gave birth to her son, Prince Siddhartha. The story of the panel continues until the prince becomes the Buddha. So when we look at this, note the um, relief carving and also note how densely packed the scene is. And this is a term called hor vacui. We talked about it when we were looking at ancient Greek um, vase painting as well. So we, we do see this um, term pop up in other um, cultures. So Horvacui, H-O-R-R-O-R-V-A-C-U-I, which is a fear of negative space. Moving past the base and through the four galleries, the devotee emerges onto the upper terraces, encountering 72 stupas, each containing a three-dimensional sculpture of a seated Buddha within a stone latticework. Um, at the temple's apex sits the larger central stupa, a symbol of the enlightened mind. So while the sheer size and scope of the mandala structure, such as this makes the site worthy of admiration, it is important to understand how the experience of Bora Badur relates to the philosophic and spiritual underpinnings of the Buddhist religion. Um, it rethifies and commemorates. Since its inception, roughly 25 hundred years ago, Buddhism has directly engaged what is seen as the paradoxical nature of human existence. The most essential tenet, the religion um, promulgates its um, impermeant transient nature of existence. Transcendental wisdom via the Dharma, the Noble Eightfold Path, hinges on recognizing that attachment to the idea of a fixed immutable self is a delusion. Enlightenment of uh, enlightenment entails embracing the concept of no self or anatta, A-N-A-T-T-A, -T -T -A, understood to be at the heart of eliminating the suffering and dissatisfaction, dukkha, D-U-K-K-H-A, of, um, of, of sentient beings. This is the ultimate message expressed in the sacred scripture that solidifies an artistic magnificence along the stone walls and railings of Bora Badur. 
The physical movement of circuambulating the structure symbolizes the non-physical or spiritual path of enlightenment. In a real sense, then, the concept of path within um, Borobudur monumentalizes um, the, imperme the imperme impermanent, um, like a river that is never the same from moment to moment, to physical, to physically move along the path while um, um, meditating on the spiritual message of the sutras is meant to help one fully embrace the Buddha's paradoxical message of impermanence. Um, text, um, the text illustrated on the walls refer to pathways as well, as we can see in this image. For instance, the um, Gandava Yuha Sutra forms a major segment of the temple's upper galleries. The last chapter of a larger text called the Flower Garland Sutra, um, it relates the story of um, Sudahana, a youth who commences a journey to meet 53 teachers while seeking the path to enlightenment. The concept of path is a central theme in the text. He eventually meets an enlightened being, a Bhattavista or Bhatta, a Bhattahisava named uh, the Manta Bahadra. Um, excerpts from the larger um, sutra illustrate um, the, con uh, the concepts under discussion. Um, so in quotes, I will lead those who have lost their way to the right road. I will be bright. I will be a bright light for those in the dark and cause the poor and destitute to uncover hidden treasures. Um, the Bada Vista and partially um, benefits all living beings in this manner. I vow to shut the door to evil destinies and open the right paths of humans, gods, and that of Nirvana. Once any sentient being, um, once any sentient being, um, being see the Buddha, it will cause them to clear away habitual obstruction and forever abandon devilish actions. This is a path traveled by illumination. Um, sentient beings are blinded by ignorance, always confused. The light of Buddha eliminates the path of safety to rescue them and cause suffering to be removed. All sentient beings are on a false path. Buddha shows them the right path, inconceivable, causing all worlds to be vessels of truth. So this idea of moving from darkness into light is the final element of the experience of um, Bora Badur. The temple's pathway takes one from the early earthly realm of desire, Ka Man. The Hatu, represented and documented on the hidden narratives of the structure's earthbound base, through the world of forms, um, Ra Bahatu, as expounded on the narratives carved along the four galleries set at right angles, until one finally emerges into the realm of formlessness, R Rapadhatu as symbolized and manifested in the open circular terraces crowned with the 72 stupas. However, the symbolization of enlightenment the these stupas represent is intended to be, is not intended to be merely aesthetic. Buddha stupas and mandal mandalas are understood as spiritual technologies that harness spiritual energies and the creation of sacred space. The repetition of form and the circuambulatory progress of the pilgrim mimic and thereby access the cosmological um, as a microcosm. The clockwise movement around the cosmic center reproduces the macrocosmic path of the sun. Thus, when one emerges from the dark galleries representing the realms of desire and form into the light of the formless, circular open air upper walkways, um, the material effect of light on one's physical form merges um, um, with, you know, co, you know, in, in conjunction with um, spiritual enlightenment generated by the metaphysical journey of the sacred path. Light in all its paradoxes is the ultimate goal. 
the crowning stupa of the sacred mountain is dedicated to the great sun Buddha. Um, there, Rakana, the temple sits in cosmic proximity to the nearby volcano Mount um, Rap Marapa, Marapi. During certain times of the year, the path of the rising sun in the east seems to emerge out of the mountains to strike the temple's peak in a radiant um, synergy. Light illuminates the stones in a way that is intended to be more than beautiful. The brilliance of the site can be found in how the Orbador Mandela blends the metaphysical and physical, the symbolic and the material, the cosmological and the earthly within the structure of its physical setting and the framework of spiritual paradox. Right. Well, that's our last image. Um, in conclusion, the diversity of the Indian subcontinent is reflected in a wide range of artistic expression. One finds um, there, Indians typically unify the art so that one large monument is realized as a single creative expression involving paintings, sculpture, and architecture. Um, we, just, we just saw that with um, Borobudur. Um, Buddhist images dominate early Indian art. Buddha himself is often depicted in a meditative state with his various mudras. These are these hand gestures revealing his inner thoughts. Hindu sculptures feature a myriad of gods with Shiva as the most dominant. Both Buddha and Hindu temples are mound shaped. The Buddhist um, works being a large solid hemisphere and the Hindu a sculpted mountain with a small interior. Both Hindu and Buddhist art are marked by horror vacui, um, this idea of negative space. Forms pile on top of the other in crowded compositions. So um, this is the end of our unit related to South, um, to Indian and Southeast Asian art. Um, we will be looking a little bit more at Buddhism when we um, travel to China and Japan um, later in the quarter. Stay tuned.